The inspiration for the work I did as U.S. Attorney in the community, in particular in the Somali community, comes from the administration I was working for. The Obama administration and the Eric Holder Justice Department made it clear from day one that they wanted U.S. attorneys and others in law enforcement to work hard on building such bridges. It's not the first administration. Republican and Democratic administrations had focused on this before. There was a real effort, though, particularly with U.S. attorneys, that we should be in the community and have strong ties and relationships where possible. So we decided, I decided, that I couldn't meet everybody and I couldn't get to know everybody at once. Uh, I would start with the faith leaders because faith is so important to me. Um, I, I, why not start there and show kind of respect for the faith? So I asked one of the imams at the time to, if, if I could have dinner with as many imams as would come and just talk. And the very first uh, dinner uh, was in June after I started. Uh, I can tell you where it was and who was there, but there were over 20 Somali imams present and we kind of went around the table and talked about what was on our mind. And I, I wanted no stone unturned, so I, I just said, let's be clear. Um, you don't know me and it's gonna take a while for you to get to know me but here's who I am. Uh, I, I believe in my faith and I respect yours and I know you believe in yours. I'm Jewish, uh, you're Muslim. Let's just put that out on the table because there was actually somebody who had said to me early on, uh, boy, this is gonna be hard for you to do because you're Jewish. I didn't believe that for a minute, but I wanted to make sure nobody else did. And the imams just reacted so positively and they started talking about the similarities in our faiths and everybody had something that they wanted to talk about from the Quran that relates to what's in the Torah. And so we, we, got all, we got along great. And then that set the tone for what were then monthly dinners and meetings uh, just to talk about what was happening in the community. Building a bridge to try to prevent crime and to try to make sure that, you know, if there are things that are happening and, and that you need us to know about, we're gonna do that. But that doesn't stop us from prosecuting criminal behavior going on in any community. And so I was going, I, I made it clear, I would be in aggressive in addressing terrorism uh, in the Twin Cities, and I was, and, and I had to be, and I believe in that, but there's no sort of either or. You gotta do both. Working with the community, trying to prevent terror recruiting from taking hold in ways that the community thought would work, along with prosecuting those who, who were successfully recruited, um, and then the third piece of that was addressing kind of backlash against people in the community um, under the rubric of Islamophobia or whatever you want to call it and making sure that the government stands up for everybody's ability to practice their faith. And I was very out front about that and very forthcoming about how important that was to me. Honoring the, the rights and the dignity of your audience is important. And we had a test early on, Paul. Uh, one of the things we talked about at that very first dinner that I, I didn't know was that they had that the community had filed a civil rights complaint uh, against a village in Minnesota that had refused to allow the opening of a mosque and that they hadn't heard um, any progress on it. I was still relatively new as U.S. Attorney. I didn't know everything that was in my office. And the next, I said to them, I'll, I'll know something about this tomorrow morning. First thing the next day, I convened the lawyers in the office who were involved in that investigation. I got briefed on it, I got up to speed on it, and we pushed it forward because it, it was an investigation that showed that the law had been violated, and we sued the city, the, the village that refused to open the mosque. And I invited the imams to the press conference when we announced it, and I said, we're gonna fix this and we're gonna do the right thing. And I pressed the, the mayor and the, the city council and in a short period of time, they changed their mind and we settled and the mosque was permitted to open. And from my perspective, I wanted the lawsuit and the settlement, not just to be an attack on a city that had done the wrong thing and, and, and it violated the law, but as another way to build bridges. So I asked the mayor and the imam 
the lead imam from the mosque to speak at the settlement, at the press conference announcing the settlement. And then um, while we're all standing there, it just occurred to me with cameras uh, on us that if they would shake hands and say something to each other, that would go a long way toward healing what had been a tense time in, in that particular town, and they did. And uh, sort of, if you were back at the U.S. Attorney's Office and you were looking at what was on my wall, a picture of those two guys shaking hands um, with the snow falling in December uh, 2014 outside of the mosque, that would be one of them.